All right, we'll get started here. Um, this is the Building Native Cross-Platform Apps with App Studio and Introduction Session. Okay, the longer the name, the more, uh, you know, more people will bring in. It sounds really, uh, really uh, a smart subject for all of us. Um, my name is Chris Lesweer. I'm the Product Manager uh, with App Studio for ArcGIS. This is Tina Jin. Hello. One of our uh, Product Engineers, and Erwin Soakyanto. Another uh, product engineer and evangelist here on the App Studio team. We'll jump. Whoa, we'll jump right into it. First, well, let me ask a question: Who's used App Studio already? Any users? Okay, a few, a few. Great. Hopefully, we'll teach you some new new things, and you'll see some new Just things. Installed Just installed it. That's uh, good enough. That's great. All right. So, what is App Studio for ArcGIS? If I was to sum it up in a you know in a short phrase, I would say it's a, it's a suite of productivity tools for creating native apps. So this is all about creating native applications that will run and install on your devices. Um, you know, smartphones, tablets, even desktops uh, or um, laptops and, and things. So not running in a browser, uh, but running as an installed application on your device. Why native apps? Why do we care about native apps? Um, the web is great. We saw amazing things that can be done on the web uh, just, a, just a moment ago in the plenary. Why do we care about native apps? Well, there's a few reasons. Um, th one is uh, the ability to take data and, and analysis and things offline. We don't always have connectivity. Um, sometimes we're working offline in someone's environment, especially with smartphones, tablets, and things. We don't always have connectivity. We need to work offline at times. So it's one reason uh, for, for uh, going native or using uh, building a native app. Uh, device capabilities. So being able to access um, the hardware, maybe the GPU, the CPU power, the, the processing power, even you know, our smartphones today have, have amazing power. Being able to access uh, th those device capabilities, maybe the sensors, the, the gyroscope and things on, on a device, or just also the operating system itself that offers things like sharing capabilities, being able to share into share to another app, um, being able to access maybe the contacts or something. So being able to access specific device and really kind of uh, maybe plat you could say platform or operating system capabilities. And the last one there is uh, of access to the app stores, and that for some people that's like almost the only reason they care to do this because, hey, we want to get our brand and our app into the app store. Um, that's where people go, that's where, you know, they go to find their apps, that's where they're downloading them from. Um, they expect that our organization's gonna have an app and, and it's a way to promote maybe your, your maps and data or your organization through that app store. I expect that my that my city has an app, and, and they do, uh, that if I sign up for a bank or an insurance uh, policy or whatever, I, I expect, yeah, they're gonna have like an app in the app store I can just download and get access to this information uh, in a nice formatted way you know, on my device. And so um, app stores, are, to many people, that's, that's, that's really important. Not to everyone, but uh, for many, that's an that's a important piece. Uh, there are challenges with native app development. Uh, it's it's complicated, uh, putting together all the different pieces. Um, it can be expensive, uh, whether that's you, uh, the expense of your you know, time and skills doing it, whether that's hiring someone else, a third party to do it. It's not, uh, it's not you know, uh, be a freelance app developer. They, they, they charge a good sum of money uh, to build these type of apps, um, uh, native apps, particularly like on the smartphone uh, level and things. Um, and obviously time consuming. Uh, do you have enough time? Do you have enough time to dedicate, you know, the resources, skills, um, skill set, you know, to, to build a native app? And these are some we, we, uh, of the things that we really uh, try to uh, uh, accomplish, make it more approachable with App Studio for people to be able to build native apps by, by addressing a number of these, these challenges. What do you get with App Studio? I said it's a productivity suite. So let me just, I'm gonna go through a number of the pieces, because there are a number of pieces that, that, that make up this whole product. What do you get with App Studio? Um, and and uh, I'll, I'll explain a little bit, which uh, will set, the, uh, set the, the page for the rest of the, the presentation here. When, um, with App Studio, you, we have an App Studio desktop application. App Studio desktop is your tool for, um, allowing you to manage your apps, to create new apps, to access our samples. We have layouts, we have templates. Uh, being able to 
um, quickly build and, and get going um, developing an app. Um, it, it, it allows you to um, change many of the settings and properties of your application, and just a, a key tool for for managing your projects, and also um, tools for uploading and things. Tina is going to go into a, an in-depth demonstration in a little bit of, of desktop, so I won't go too much into that, but you, you'll see it's a key piece. We have a unique um, thing called App Studio Player. Player allows you to write your uh, sorry, Player allows you to play an application that has been written in desktop. So without actually generating a build, like an install file that you need to, you know, uh, install on, on a device um, as a native separate application, Player will allow you to play your app um, that you've created in, um, in desktop. Think of it, Player, as what what does your browser do on your on your device or on your in your desktop? A browser plays HTML content and lets you view it. The, this App Studio Player plays the native apps created with app um, with desktop. And we'll again go into more detail on Player a little later. We give you a number of templates. These are templates that you can really configure and and uh, deploy. Um, you don't need to have developing developer skills. You need to be able to upload an image, connect it to uh, a web map you've created, but you don't need to actually write code with uh, these standard templates that we have for creating apps. Uh, if you do want to get a little deeper into some uh, modification and probably a little into some code, we have some powerful enterprise templates that allow you to um, extend some um, uh, or add to some more functionality or maybe just brand them. You might notice, well, it's kind of hidden there. Survey123 is one of those. We give you a, we have a template for Survey123 if you want to brand or extend add functionality to Survey123. We also include as part of this install uh, the Qt, the Qt Creator IDE, an, an integrated development environment. So this, when you are at that level, you're going to be editing code and, and, and adding functionality and altering some, some of the code. We include uh, a complete uh, IDE um, for, for, writing, um, for writing some of the code. The, the language you write in is called QML. It's, uh, I would say, a very approachable language. If you've done any HTML JavaScript um, work, it's going to be very uh, readable. And um, I think you'll, you'll understand that it actually uses JavaScript for some of the um, business logic and a kind of a markup language similar to HTML for some of the layouts of building your apps. In the second half of uh, um, today, Erwin is going to go into actually showing some code. Who wants to see code in this today? Oh, wow. About half of you, I think. Maybe the other half like, oh, we don't need to see any code. Well, you're going to see. But it's going to be so, such beautiful code, and it's going to be so easy to read. You're all going to love it. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, and then there's this other piece that I'm going to talk about called CloudMake. CloudMake is uh, um, a really unique piece of App Studio. So I talked about we can, we can uh, build these apps and start and get them going with App Studio Desktop. We can maybe customize them with the Qt IDE. But when you actually build for different platforms, do you need to set up a different build machine for Android, iOS, Windows, different, you know, different build machines? Or uh, in this case, we don't, you don't have to do that, right? We take care of that. We have a number of build machines in the cloud. You just send us, you know, upload your app project, and we take that and we do the build for you and deliver you an EXE for uh, Windows or an IPA uh, file for um, iOS and APK for Android. We take care of that. So we manage those build machines. We make sure that they're all, they have the latest updated libraries and things like that, you don't have to worry about that. It takes, you focus on building apps and designing apps and, and we'll take care of that, that piece. How do we, well, I, I just mentioned that you write it once and we'll do this build. So we, we, that is, I guess, when people think of App Studio, this cross-platform, this ability to write an app once and build it for different platforms. And it is truly, it's not that the UI is going to look different on Android and iOS or not. They're just going to look the same. You're, you're going to build your app once, and it will look the same and behave the same on these different platforms. Um, even you know, a Windows tablet and an iPad, you can build your app once and build it for both. And how do, you know, how do we do this magical um, thing where we can write it once and then build it for these different um, technologies? Well, we utilize some technology from a company called Qt. Uh, Qt, if you don't know, it's a, it's a C++, well, primarily it's a C++ SDK. It's a company that has a C++ SDK that's used in all sorts of applications. This morning we saw some, some cool um, embedded Qt inside of a, uh, a Linux um, 
um, device um, showing kind of like a, a, a navigation um, uh, perspective or a navigation app. Um, well, so as I mentioned, Qt is a C++ SDK. We don't write in, in AppSue. We don't write in C++. They have a, a few years ago, they kind of got this abstracted language called QML, uh, this acute uh, meta language. It is, a, it is a, a simpler markup language. If you write in that QML, you can then build, um, you can um, do a build process for these different um, platforms. So we've taken that functionality, but they added all these many other things onto it, like App Studio Desktop, like App Studio Player, and all these productivity tools to make it easy and get you um, up and running quickly with that, um, building apps. All right, let me, I have a couple slides here. Uh, talk about, I want to know, like, I want you, I don't want, I'm not going to ask who you are, but I want you to think about who you are in this case. So are you a, what I would call a configurator, a geo hacker, or a code ninja? So what, what is it, what do I, what does Chris Lissweird, you know, define as a, a configurator? It's probably, a, you know, a, a GIS user. You have some technical skills. You can build things like web maps. Um, you can create web apps using apps, um, web app builder maybe, or configurable apps. Yeah, that, that's kind of, this is, you are a, uh, you know, a GIS user and, and probably fall in this configurator spot. How about the geo hacker? Um, first of all, who, who would say they're a configurator in the room? Raise the hands. All right, okay, I think we might get more in this next. Geo hacker, a GIS professional, maybe a GIS professional, good chance, uh, this conference. You can maybe write and run some Python, maybe read and write some HTML, dabble in some JavaScript, copy and paste code from some sample and put it into your own application, and generally figure out how to get the job done and, and problem solve things. Who, who would consider themselves a geo hacker? Okay. And then the code ninja. I say if you're fluent in at least one programming language, uh, you'd rather start from scratch. You, maybe you're, you're a full-on develop. You know, someone asks you what's your job. I'm a web developer. You know, that's, that's maybe that's the answer you give, and you just love reading API documentation. That's so who who's a, who's a code ninja? Who's a code ninja? Okay. Oh wow. Actually, then this is I should know, this is the develop. So this is the developer conference, and the, you know, a, a good chunk you put the code ninja hand up. We do the same session at the user conference, and there's like. You know, 300 people in the room, there's like three people who are like actual, you know, it's a different audience, it's a different, different people, so great. Well, we, we can hit like all of these buckets. Um, so what can you do as a, as a configurator? As a configurator with App Studio, you can configure an app with custom maps and data, change the icons, change the, the colors of your, your, um, of your uh, app, brand it as your own. Add specific fonts in there, and a number. There's a number of other settings you can change. You can test these on devices, share these with uh, coworkers, and publish these um, to the app stores, or you could actually publish them into the um, into your enterprise. So, at a configurator level, those are all the kind of things you can do. At a geo hacker level, you can extend those these our standard templates, add extra functionality, um, use the sample code we have, add new functionality to maybe an existing app. Uh, maybe maybe create an app by using one of our, our layouts. We have a number of layouts. Maybe you want to not start 100% from scratch, but give me a, a nice layout to begin with, and I'll fill in the rest with some maps and data and things. And then, of course, the Code Ninja, you, good chance, you might just want to start from scratch. Uh, or maybe you want to integrate with a specific piece of hardware. Maybe you want to add a custom uh, component into, you know, develop your own custom component that you're going to add into this, this code base, or extend, really extend deeply one of our um, enterprise templates, like Server123 or something. You know, that's, that's kind of what the, uh, the Code Ninja would fall into. So, kind of hopefully this sets the stage for what you can do, um, these different levels. And of course, you can grow from one to the next. We're not putting you in a bucket or anything. This is, um, this is, this is how it works. Yeah. So, uh, how do I get? How do you get App Studio for ArcGIS? Um, it is. I won't click on this link. It is part of our um, developer subscription plan. So, any of the paid developer subscription plans. Um, so that anything above, we have Essentials, which is kind of the, the free uh, developer subscription plan, and then Builder and above. It comes as part of that, and that's how you. That's how you get access to what we call an App Studio standard license. I didn't really. I don't really have a slide here. We do have something called App Studio Basic. App Studio Basic. Uh, we have a, a website allows you to configure. Um, uh, some of the elements of our of our templates through a, a website. Uh, there's kind of a limited number of configuration options there. 
And that's available to anyone who has a, a level two or cr creator user type in an, an ArcGIS organization. You have access to that basic. But in this developer conference and getting deeper into the configuring and then coding, we're really talking about App Studio Standard, the full product. Um, but you get it as part of those builder and above. I will say, if you don't know if you have this license, check with your organization. Sometimes people use, they had an Esri developer network um, license and then that got moved over to a developer subscription and if you had a paid developer network license, you most likely in your organization have a um, App Studio standard license in, in your develop, in a new develop, Esri developer, or just developer network, or developer subscription, sorry. You get it. Click on the link. You, in, in order to develop a conference, I know they talked about it a bit this morning as well. Um, there is, I won't go into this, there is some, if depending on what functionality you build into your app, there is runtime licensing. So we have, we have the ArcGIS runtime. This is our core mapping. This is, this is the, uh, you know, the, the, the libraries that uh, allow us to do a lot of really cool mapping capabilities, you know, 2D, 3D mapping and visualization and things. Um, depending on what functionality you put in there, we are, we do fall into lines with um, some of the runtime licensing. So um, talk to us afterwards. If you have questions about, well, I want to do an app that does this certain thing, what kind of licensing do I need? I will say all the templates we're going to show you today, I'll use the light licensing, which is free. Free to distribute, no cost to go. When you get into things like editing private data, like lockdown private data, we have to log in and edit data, that's when you jump to things like basic, where you have to um, have like some, them even log in with a username, or we have these deployment packs you can, you can uh, purchase from us. Really quickly, I just want to roll through a, a number um, of, app, give you some examples of what people have built with App Studio. And then we'll, we'll jump into uh, a few demos. So one is Survey123. Survey123 was, um, was built with App Studio, and it is uh, it released um, because of that. It's on iOS, it's on Android, it's on Windows. There's a Mac and a Linux version of Survey123. When it releases, it releases on all um, platforms at the same time because they can write it once and build it. And Survey123 is, is, is a very popular um, application from, from, from Esri. Um, we have no, a lot of users. And how many, how many developers do you think we have working on Survey123, writing the code for Survey123? How many do you think? What do we say, four, five? Okay, maybe there's, we're in trouble because if this room blows up, we're, there's no more server one, two, three. There's one developer who's really writing the code. He's in this room right now. It's not, it's not either of us. It's just code on the laptop. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Unencrypted on the laptop. No, no, yeah, yeah. No, so server one, two, three is really amazing. Like, uh, it's one, you know, primarily one developer. There's, sure, there's a whole team of tester, just people testing and working on the application, but um, it's, a, it's a really testament to power of this product. Um, so obviously, I mentioned customizing Survey123 is another option, and we have users like Red Cross. There's a custom version of Survey123 for the Red Cross. It literally is red instead of green, and has their icon, and points to their enterprise server, and that's, that's the difference. Um, you know, we have other organizations that just want to, this is a crowdsourcing application using one of our templates, the uh, Quick Report template for um, capturing information about um, vandalism of uh, you know, federal lands where they might not have enough um, uh, rangers and and people monitoring that. So uh, a really cool tool it was and literally this is taking our template, branding it with own colors, images, and and, and fonts and things, and and publishing that to the app stores. And this was done in a, a short amount of time by one of our uh, customers. You can create total custom applications. This is from Esri Professional Services. Um, if you ever heard of eight one one call before you dig um, type of a scenario, uh, this is a, a field application for going out and <laughs> Spraying, spray painting your lawn so that they don't, uh, you don't dig up your gas line and things like that. Um, but a total custom application that runs on. Um, what was, I said, what's cool about that is that if the first three customers we had with this, one of them was on iOS, one was on, on tablets, one was on Android, one was on Windows. Like the, it was like totally fit that, that scenario. Yes. Are all the apps still? They're still using the Survey One Two Three um, servers. The endpoint, right? Sorry, with the Survey One Two Three customization, yes. Yeah, that, that that doesn't change. Yeah, it's the app. That it's the it's the mobile app. That's branded. Yep, yep. No good question. Um, another cool, cu totally custom application from an Esri partner. They were hired by MassDOT. They had a short time frame. They needed an iOS and Android app, and they chose App Studio because they knew they could write it once and build a customer twice, right? So. Um, uh, I joke about that. So uh, it's, and they were able to quickly do this and, and brand it to look, uh, in this case, it reads kind of a, an app that gives you the information that comes from those uh, road signs that tell you like, you know, 
five minutes to the airport and things like that. Uh, another totally custom app from a, a partner of ours. This is for doing um, editing of data and capturing information on dairy farms. Uh, it works offline. You can edit data, um, take data offline, and they used to have a similar app on Windows, but the customer needed Windows and iPads, and this was a nice uh, solution that they built. And then uh, another partner of, us, partner of ours, this is just really cool. It does a lot of, uh, it's called um, uh, Wildfire Pocket Analyst, or Wildfire Analyst Pocket. It does, you know, they um, took a lot of uh, information on uh, wildfire um, science um, and, and wildfire propagation and put it into an app where you can say, okay, I'm at this location, this is what the terrain's like, this is what the vegetation vegetation's like, this is what the humidity and the wind is like, what if there was a fire here, how, where would it move and how quickly and, th and doing that kind of uh, information. And they wrapped it all up into an app with App Studio and delivered it uh, into the app stores. If you want to see um, some of our apps or try them out and see what others have done, we do have a showcase of apps. These are just some of the apps that we have found or that, we're, that are kind of available. There's some public links you can download. Most of these you can download. It's the, go to appstudio.arcgest.com, look for the showcase, um, the showcase gallery link, and you'll see a number of these. All right, enough of, enough of Chris talking. We're now gonna, uh, we're gonna have two, st two parts here. Tina is gonna introduce us to App Studio Desktop. You give us a tour of desktop, what um, the different capabilities of desktop, and also configure a, um, using our map viewer template, configure a, a custom our, uh, map, uh, or app, sorry, using the map viewer template. So I'll turn the time now to Tina. Yeah. Oh, you want this one? Which one do you want? Yeah, this one. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, now I'm going to give you a quick tour of the App Studio desktop. So here's my App Studio desktop that I have downloaded from appstudio.rgs.com downloading page. As you can see on the right corner, I have signed in with my ArcGIS online account. You can also sign into your enterprise account by adding your portal URL in here. A lot of people have questions asking, how can I find out if I have App Studio license, standard license or not? This is where you can see what kind of App Studio license you have. There are multiple ways to start to create a new app. I'm going to click on this button. Here we have a few starter apps. If you like to write your app from scratch, you can choose one of these starter app. As Chris mentioned before, we also have a three ready to use configurable template, map tour, map viewer, and quick report. You can download them from here. We also provide you a few nice looking material design layouts. For example, I'm going to create a new set menu layout. I'm now double click on the app to run it on my desktop. As you can see, there's a set menu. It opens a drawer, which allows you to navigate to different pages. It really helps you to get started, get to understand what is the basic structure of your app. Under this samples tab, we have provided you more than 70 samples where you can, which demonstrate a specific functionality either for RGS runtime or for app framework. So for example, if I want to have this functionality to show my device location for my app, I can go to maps category and looking for this display device location app. You can check out the source code, maybe copy and paste to your own app. Under the last tab, we have provided you a few enterprise templates. 
We have Survey123, AppStudio Player, and also some other Azure Lab apps that were created using AppStudio Desktop, using AppStudio. So a lot of our clients actually customize and rebranding Survey123 using AppStudio. Here is my app gallery area where I can find all of my apps and the apps that are shared with me. I can search my app, I can filter the apps, I can also sort by the date and by the title. On the left hand side panel, we have provided you a set of app developing tools. For example, I'm going to click on this settings tool. This is where you can configure your app properties such as change the title, give it a summary and description. Under this resources section, you can add an icon for your app and put some launch, launch image for your app. Here is a section where you can configure all of template related properties. You can turn on or off capabilities that are being used in your app. Here are some licensing information that you can put in here. If I click on this QR code, it will open a QR code of my of my app, which allows you to scan this QR code to download into the App Studio Player. I will show you what is App Studio Player and how this works just in a bit. Now I'm going to click on this open button. It opens my app in Argis Online, where you can share it or you can change the descriptions all in here. Now I'm going to click on this run button. It runs my application in the App Studio desktop. This app for this this sales button will open your app project folder. So now I'm going to show you how to create, how to configure a map viewer template and create an app like this. This is a National Park Trails app that I just created in 10 minutes. In here, I have a collection of National Park Trail web maps, which are created by the federal user community. I also have a few offline web maps. Now I'm going to click on one of the web map. Here I have a, I have a map that I can interact with. You can also find the descriptions of your web maps on the left side panel. You can see the legend in here. You can turn on or off layers. You can click on one of the feature to identify it. This is a nice image that Chris has took during his trip. So on the header, we also provide you a set of tools. You can search for places, you can also search for a feature. Now I'm going to search for REST RAM and it returns all of the camp set that is in the REST RAM. I also have this measure tool that I can measure for a distance or for an area. I can, I can change my colors and change the unit. What I like about this tool is the ability to take a screenshot. You can easily share your map 
through the email. So on this uh, base map set panel, you can choose a few base map in here. If your web map has uh, bookmarks in there, you can tap on the bookmark and it will zoom to your favorite places. We also have this map units. You can turn it on or turn it off. Turn it on. <laughs> if you wish to display the graphicals, you can use this graphical tools. OK, now I'm going to show you how did I configure this map viewer template. I will go to the new app dialog again and choose map viewer template. I'm going to go to my app project folder, ISS folder, to move my app icons and background image in this folder. Now I'm going to click on this sightings tool to give this app a title. Snow Park Trails. Then I will copy my app summary from the text editor in here. A collection of hiking maps for national parks. And give my app some description. As I make changes, I like to apply it and to see what my app looks like. As you can see now, the title and summary has been changed. Now I'm going to the About page. I can see my descriptions showing in here, which is correct. Now I want to give a new icon for my app. I go to the ISS folder and select the icon that I just created. Now I'm going to change the background image for the landing page of my app. So I found this cool mountain image that I want to use. Now I'm going to change the branding color. This is a brown color, which is the same color that used in the National Park Service logo. Going to increase my base font a little bit Click on Apply to run my app again. As you can see now, on the landing page, it is the background image that I have configured. And the branding color has changed to the brown. Right now, all we need to do is to bring our content into this map view. I will go back to the app settings and go to the gallery tab. So there are three ways to put your content into the map viewer. You can enter your web maps or mobile map package atom ID in here. You can also put the text of your atoms in here. So what I'm going to do in here is put my group ID. This is because I have shared all of the content that I want to put in the map viewer into a group. So I'm going to copy and paste my group ID under this maps query field. There's one more thing I need to do is to 
choose show both in this maps to show in gallery property. We provide you the option to show online web maps only and the offline mobile maps only. But in this case, I want to see both online and offline web maps. Now I'm going to hit on the apply button and run my app again. As you can see in here are a collection of my national park trails that I have shared into my group and some offline maps. This is exactly the same as what I showed you before. So now I think my app looks really good on a desktop. I want to know how it looks like on a mobile device. So first of all, I will need to upload my app into my Argus Online organization. Before I upload it, I want to share my app to everyone. This is another great tool that we have provided. It's called App Studio Player. I download from App Store. Here is the landing page. While I'm swapping, I can also see a short description of what the player is. So you can download player from Apple App Store, Google Play Store. You can even download player on your Windows, Mac OS, or Linux desktop, which means you can test in your app on a wide range of devices on multiple platforms. Player really allows you to test your app instantly on a real device without a build request. If you want to get the feedback of your app, you can just simply ask your coworkers or client to download the player and to provide you feedback. You can also use player as an enterprise distribution app. As I mentioned before, the player source code is fully available from App Studio Desktop. You can totally take it and customize rebranding it as your own enterprise distribution app. Isn't it cool to have like your own version of App Store using customized player? <laughs> yeah. So on this landing page, I have two buttons, a signing button and also a skip button. What I want to highlight here is you actually do not really need to have an Arches Online account, but you can still do a lot of things using App Studio Player. Now I'm going to tap on this scan QR code option on the set menu. And I'm going to scan this QR code of my National Park Trails app. As you can see now, the player is downloading my National Park Trails app. Now it runs my apps on a real device in the player. I'm going to turn to a landscape mode. I click on the start button and the app looks good on this device as well. It is exactly the same as what I have configured in my desktop. I can also view our samples directly on the device in the player. Those samples are categorized and they demonstrate either RG's runtime or the app framework functionalities that we have provided. I'm going to review this text-to-speech sample. Mm. Oh, really? Okay. We'll show you later. <laughs> talks. So we're plugged into the video system, grabbing your audio for the day. Okay, it will say, welcome to Palm Springs. 
Okay, now I'm going to sign into my account. When I tap on the sign in button, it prompts me with two options. I can sign into my Argis online account. I can also sign into my enterprise portal account. Now let me just quickly sign in. Do you want me to see your password? I already. <laughs> I securely paste it in my clipboard. Okay, so once I have signed in, it dragged me to the cloud page. This is where you can find all of your apps or the apps that are shared with you from your organization. Now I'm going to download one of the app. Once my app is downloaded, they will be stored locally into this home page. I'm going to tap on the thumbnail of this Palm Spring app. This is where you can find all of the metadata of your app, such as details, descriptions, the capabilities are being used in your app, and some licensing information. You can share your app Status. You can also share, change your app sharing status in here. I'm going to change it to public as well. Now I'm going to hit the play button on the bottom. It's going to run my Palm Spring apps. Let's see if I want to publish the app to the App Store. I do need some screenshot for my app, right? So now I'm going to get rid of this set tab by using the screenshot mode and take a screenshot. So to make my set tab reappear, I can minimize and reopen it. Now it comes back. So one last thing I want to show you about the player is the ability to choose this dark mode which is Chris's favorite mode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, Tina. Yeah, um, that's App Studio. If you didn't, you know, she didn't sign in to download that app, you're like, well, how, what, why didn't she sign in? It's because it, that, your app is actually stored as an item in your organization. So she made that item public, and then she used the QR code, boom, to download it without signing in. Um, I don't know, it, yeah, just these are all pieces um, part of the platform. And there's, you know, things are stored as items and you can share them just like you can share any other, any other item. We didn't really go into cloud make capabilities, but you can talk to us um, about that later um, in, in the booth or something about being able to actually just really selecting one of those apps, clicking a button and asking for an actual uh, build for different platforms of your application. But now I want to turn time over to Erwin, who's going to show us some, uh, get into code, what you guys, I think, uh, a lot of people want to see. All right, this. All right, uh, let me take me back to Chris. I put my Code Ninja hat in. And then uh, let's get going. Uh, so I have App Studio Desktop here with the dark mode. I know the, the light mode hurt your eyes earlier for a good 20 minutes. Uh, so, <laughs> so I have the app ready uh, for, for, for this show. I have this Dev Summit app that I can double click, as Tina said, that just has a blank page. So let's get, get into the source code of the app, then try to modify the source code and add more stuff into it. So I'm going to, uh, the way to get into the source code of any app in App Studio is by right clicking on the app and click Edit in Qt Creator, or select the app and then click on the Edit button on the side panel. So I'm going to click that. What it's going to do, it's going to open a different application that we call Qt Creator, which is the IDE that we use to edit the source code, or basically a text editor to make changes to the text file. So what I have here, uh, as Chris mentioned, it uses a QML uh, language with, with JavaScript. So as, as, as normal, any other programming language, we have an import statement that imports all the library that we need uh, for, uh, to be used in this app. And this app has an ID and width and a height of 46640, and then it's loading a page two, which uh, it's here, page2.qml. I open this page two, and it has nothing in it. And as we were to run it again, it has a, a blank page. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add more code into this and then show you how it's progressively adding more component into the app. So as any other good cooking show out there, I have the stuff ready and just copy and paste and then I explain to you each component that I add. So now I have a page. I'm going to add a header. I'll copy this header section and I'll paste it inside the page curly bracket. So I paste it in here. So if we review, I have a page and I have header inside it. Inside the header, I have a toolbar with a width and a height of 56 units. And I give the color to this header, the color of orange, and I give it elevation of 10 units, meaning that the header will come out of the page and it looks like it is above the page. And then inside this header, it anchors to the parent. It has a spacing of eight. I also have a, a tool button that will give you a, an arrow button, which is a back icon that will let you go back. And then a label that says a map with all of these properties of where this item would be. So I have a, this label that will fill the whole layout, width and height, and then it is uh, aligned, centered horizontally and vertically. I set the size of the font, and then what font I want to use, and then the color of the font. So I'm going to save this file, and I'll rerun this again. And then now, I have the header. I have the header with orange color, And this is all the QML language? This is QML language, yes. So we have a header with the width and the height of 56, with the color of orange, and elevated 10 units. Can you also do RGB color? Say it again? Can you also do like RGB color? Yes, yep. Or hexadecimal web colors yep. as well. Yep. And then I have a row layout inside this header. That has spacing of eight. I have a tool button, which is this back button with, with a width and a height of, of this, and then a title that says map that, that has a color of white. So we have that. So I want to add more stuff into the page now. So I, I'm, going, gonna, I'm going to go back to the code and minimize this. I'm going to minimize the label, minimize the tool button, and then I'm going to minimize the row layout so that I can actually see how the page structure from 10,000 feet. So I'm going to minimize the header as well because we're done. So now I'm going to add more stuff under the header. So I have the code ready for that. I will copy it. And now this is, this is the map section of it. This is coming from, let me copy it. Paste it in here. So this map, this map component, map view and map component is coming from the RGS runtime Qt QML that Chris mentioned. So if I were to uncomment this and it knows that this map view and map view, map view and map uh, object are not defined. So it's coming from that library. So I uncomment this, save, and as you can see that this is a little bit not indented properly. I can select all and indent it properly. So what I just did is I add a map view that anchors to fill the whole parents with a map in it that would load the web map. Give the URL and then the ID to the web map. So, so you can configure all of your content in RGS Online. All you have to do is just simply bring in a web map. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to rerun this again. And as you can see here that I have a map added to the page. This is my web map. This is a, a, a map of Palm Spring. And you can pan around and interact with it. So after that, I'm going to add another uh, item into this uh, app, which is a button uh, somewhere in the bottom that will do uh, some action. So let's go ahead and add that, uh, that button. I have the code ready for that as well. I have this round button, I will copy this. Copy this round button. 
I, I'm done with the map view. I will minimize this. I'll minimize my header. So now I'm adding another item, another component into this page. So I added this button. I added a round button with a width and a height and then a radius of 32. I anchor this round button to be in the right bottom and then it has a margin of 20 or 50 from the right and the bottom. It also have an elevation of 6, meaning that this, this button will look like it's also above the page and it has the same color with the, with the header, which is orange. It has a content item, which is an image of an info icon. And then it has an on-click button and we're going to configure in, in just a bit. So I save this and I will run this again. So now I have a header, I have a map, and I have a button. So uh, this is the button that we have. It's, let me open that and compare with the code that we just add. We have this, this button that is anchored to the right button with some margins with the radius of 32, color, color of orange, and then it, it uses the info icon uh, images, image. So when I click on this, nothing happened yet. That's what we're going to uh, configure uh, right now. So for this, we, we know that we want to uh, add code into this. This is where the JavaScript comes from. This, uh, in the on-click event, just like in the web development, you use HTML to construct the UI, and then you use JavaScript to construct the application logic. In App Studio, you use QML to construct the UI, which I just presented to you, and then you use JavaScript to do the application logic. So see, see, uh, so it's it's that's how it's the similarity building an app in App Studio as compared to uh, web development. So I'm going to add that, but I need more libraries. I want to do something. I want to do text to speech that Tina uh, was trying to show you. So I have this import statement, import ArcGIS app framework to speech, which is a library that we and App Studio team has created to help fill the gap between the runtime and the cute uh, library that helps you create uh, native apps. So one of them is the speech functionality. So I'm going to add that speech functionality first. I'll say text to speech and I'll give it an ID. So what it does behind the scene is that we have wrapped around every native code that's required to make this functionality. For this example, is text to speech. For example, in and Android, iOS, Mac, Windows, and then we expose it as a higher level language in the QML. So all you have to do is just initialize it and then call a function that's available in that uh, object, and then you can use that functionality in, ev in every platform. So now that I've specified this, I'm going I'm going to go back to my round button in the on click event. So I want to say TTS text to speech dot say, and then I'll I'll fill in because it requires a string that the engine will speak up. So I'm going to say something that the the dark fader used to say. I'm not your father. <laughs> I'll save this and I'll rerun this. I will make sure that my volume is up, and I'll press this button. I am not your father. <laughs> so as we, so I want to open all of this uh, app that we have created. I want to see uh, the way it is progressing. So we had an empty page, and then I added a header with text and button. I added a full page map into it, and a button, and then an action in that button in less than 15 minutes that Tina just gave me. <laughs> so with that being said, I will uh, pass this on to Chris. And all of this thing, you can do it with the template that we provided. You can do the same thing, go to the source code, and make changes. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Um, so hopefully, did that look approachable, look uh, readable, the language? Yeah, I'm seeing some heads nod. Great. Um, it's, it's, it's really cool. Hold on. Let's get to two slides, and we'll take, we'll take questions here. 
Uh, just where we are right now, a little bit, little bit about our roadmap. We won't talk much. We are in beta right now for uh, our version uh, 3.3 version of App Studio. We plan to release that in April. Um, we're running to the moving to the newest version of Runtime, which adds things like offline 3D uh, scene packages. Um, we we're, we're have better support for some um, sensors, Bluetooth, Bluetooth LE, and beacons. Um, Erwin can show you a cool beacon demo later at the island if you'd like. Um, we're continuing our support for high accuracy GNSS receivers. Working on we're working on encrypted uh, data, being able to encrypt data in a SQLite um, database in your app, or updating the templates and and a number of other things that we're, we're we're working on and adding. So those are some of the things that are coming in this in this next release and and throughout the year. Uh, I just want to give a shout out if if this was interesting to you, you thought this was cool, you want to see a little more of App Studio, the sessions we have um, tomorrow. Um, Tina will be doing essentially the, uh, pretty much the same demo, getting into a little deeper into the configuration, a little deeper into um, it is the same demo. It's a demo theater, it's half hour, but a little deeper into the configuring things in desktop. There's a number of things we did not touch about that you can configure without code. Uh, then we'll be talking about deploying a uh, demo theater on deploying apps in the enterprise enterprise so that's um, different ways of uh, putting your app into the enterprise not just using app stores but maybe using app studio player and other or mdms to push apps into the app into your enterprise um, and then tomorrow afternoon at four is the continuation of this a full hour tech uh, workshop but it's advanced topics with App Studio. So going a little more advanced, talking more about plugins, um, what the possibilities and things you can do with App Studio and App Studio framework and runtime. And then I will mention that also on Thursday, um, late on Thursday is an extending Survey123. So if you're interested in extending Survey123, um, I know Elvin is gonna be there and Erwin's gonna be there um, talking about, because how do you extend Survey123? Well, with, with, with App Studio. So they'll be showing some, some really cool new stuff as well that's coming with extending. So with that, I think we're, we're about kicked out of here. Can, um, um, can take a, a few questions if you, if you have Thank it this you time. Thank you for coming. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very, uh, in the front row. <laughs> front row. What do you? Uh, so the QML, it's, I can see you've got, you're importing some libraries and you're creating some objects, and like, you know, whatever. Uh, and then, are you able to do a little bit more in there? I mean, can you create your own classes in there or and, and write functions and put in some functionality in there? Or is it strictly you just add in the um, your objects and add the and add the properties to them? You right. can. So the question, first of all, the question is, can you add your own classes and functions into QML and, and, and to work with? And I'll let your own answer. Yeah, you, you can create your own uh, custom UI. For example, you can create your own custom bun that you uh, touch up on your own, and then you can create your own JavaScript function separately, or a library that you call, and then you put the file into it, and then you like, just call, you just say import this JavaScript function.js as my JavaScript, and then you can my JavaScript dot whatever function that's available in that JavaScript function. Okay, so that would be kind of like on the UI side, and you're using JavaScript then. Right, like right. But if, but if you're trying to Say attach to the camera and then pull in pull in data from that or overlay content on the camera. Can you can within Qt would you then create your own C plus plus classes in there and it would be attaching to the to those uh, resources or so, so when, that, when we're talking about getting to the C plus plus level, I'll let you know that that's a little more um, advanced. Uh, it's kind of like possible, but things like Cloud Make aren't going to really work for you, and um, you're getting into more cute development when you are going to be adding C++ development. But, I mean that, development. but that's kind of in the architecture of the IDE, right? Yeah. So the answer to that, yes, you can. You would need to, to have your, uh, a different version of the Qt Creator, the enterprise version, and then you would need to set up, uh, then you can add all of those uh, libraries, and then when you want to do a cloud make, you have to set up your own cloud make setup. But it is possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, basically, all right. you need to spit out the project first. So right. in a, in a, in a we, I think we'll go into details on offline. We've got yeah, a couple, yeah. couple more questions. Um, what about support for uh, using third party libraries? Like, say, I have my JavaScript functions, but I want to use Lodash or something like that. Can you do so, that? so using third-party JavaScript like libraries and yeah. So, so the JavaScript the JavaScript that can be used inside App Studio is the frameworkless library. So depending on what library you want to use, if it's just a library that you uh, that's that's non-framework, 
that you can use. It's basic JavaScript that you can. But if it's a, if it's JavaScript library for the web that has a framework layer in it, then you, you would not be able to use that. Question? So connecting to on-premise, so your ArcGIS Enterprise yeah. um, data server, uh, a way to connect to that without... And, well, without, uh, just like, like in Power Apps, you have the ability to do a data connector and have a gateway, so you can just say, hey, I want you to access this gateway and then pull the data from it. So without right. having to have something on your organization that's kind of open that allows the app to connect. Is there anything on the back end that allows you to connect data sources uh, to... I don't know. I'm not familiar. You, you can, however, open a share uh, file. Like, let's say if that, that data connection, if those files are shared, meaning that it's available in the network, and then you can grab that file. If, 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 it, if it is... Uh, there's like SQL servers in your organization, be able to pull data from an SQL server. Not, the right, not directly to the SQL server, but if you expose that as a web service, uh, yeah, yeah, but it can be. It can still be internal. Then expose it to the web service, sure. and you can uh, interact through the web service. Sure. All right, question over here. Can you use the source code in all versions of light, basic, and standard? Um, so AppSphere has two two versions: um, basic and standard. Okay. And the source code that's only available at standard. Okay. Basic is purely configuring, and not even to the level that Tino is configuring today. It's a web-based configurator uh, right now. And, but yeah, to get source code and to, to, you can try it out and like, look at things, just download desktop and play around with it without, but to actually deploy and push it to people or really use it, you do need that standard license. Another thing is if you want to try this out, um, ArcGIS trial account, you know, um, you can try it out with an ArcGIS trial account um, and, and you get access to App Studio Standard. Has anybody tried to embed an app as a framework within a larger app? So if we have an app that only has one component that's a mapping component, and we don't want to use the iOS SDK for some reason, could we, could we use the, this tool for that? Um, so you have a, a larger app that you want a mapping component in, and can use this tool for to bring to bring that in. Um, it would work. The, I know the other way around. I'm trying to think. I'm pr putting this inside of another app. I don't. Uh, this not the way it's it's compiled or that's uh, run right now. No, um, the whole thing would kind of have to be built uh, out of App Studio. Yeah. Can you show the Oh, sure. I'll bring back the schedule for sure. Thank you. 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 Thank you.